to the APC's presidential primaries, which is set for today. All is set for the presidential primaries of the ruling All Progressives Congress APC today in Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. The party had screened 23 presidential aspirants last week, and 10 of them were earlier reported to have been disqualified from partaking in the primary election by the screening committee. But the leadership of the party disagreed with the recommendations of the John Odige Oyegun chaired committee and announced that it will be allowing all the aspirants to have their day at the primary election, which commences today. Well, the dramatic developments on Saturday night altered the entire dynamics of the race when 11 northern APC governors and leaders informed President Muhammad Buhari of their decision to back, uh, to back a power shift to the south. Now, based on the advisory, GR State Governor Mohamed uh, Badaru withdrew from the race, but it's uh, not clear if Senate President Ahmad Lawan, Hugi State Governor Yahya Bello, and uh, the other northerners in the race would follow the Badaru lead. The big question now is who will emerge as the flag bearer of the APC for the 2023 elections? And now to discuss further on this burning issue is political and public affairs analyst Dr. Nemeka Obiariri. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. All right, I, I want us to start before we, you know, talk about primaries and you know politicking. Let's start, start with on those state. Um, you know, and quickly share your thoughts on the developments yesterday. Very sad, um, but you know, how did this hit you? Um, very unfortunate and uh, avoidable. You know, um, on those state is suffering because they said no to terrorism. They said no to um, open grazing, and then the militias. Who, who assumed that Nigeria belongs to them, decided to hit them. The same thing Benue State is passing through. The same thing Taraba, the same thing Plateau State. And uh, this thing will continue until the indigenous people who owns this land wake up and say enough is enough. And uh, I don't know why anybody in his right senses will allow this thing to continue to fester. I blame the presidency and I also blame the political class and the governors themselves. It's very simple. These bandits, these terrorists, they hide under three known avenues. They come in as hessmen, they are in house. They come in as Okada riders. They come in as sometimes as your secret men in your houses. Very simple thing. What stops the governors from totally banning open grace across Nigeria? They can't do it. The means through which they move around. Ban open grazing. Make sure he said empower the communities. See, terror only fears terror. Terror does not pander to dialogue and beg it. Empower the communities. They are the ones who know their forest. Go into the forest, flush out the criminals wherever they are hiding. They cannot be more than the millions in every state. Make, when, you, when you ban it, you ban it. Any cow you see in the forest on the road, take it down. It's not even a matter of, let the communities butcher it and turn it into fear. Anybody, see animals, who, wild animals that live in the forest. No human being with his rest is intact, lives in the forest. Empower the communities. If you see anything in the forest and it's not the human being, flush them out. I tell you, this nonsense will end. What we are seeing here today is the expansion of terrorists. Boko Haram, Iswap, hiding under the guise of, 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 of herdsmen and whatever. Up at there, my life, I wondered before he died. See why that you have warned us. The prelate of Methodist Church over the last one week told us what is happening. They are kidnapping people for ransom. They are having themselves. And these things are no skyrocket science. We can't continue to play politics. And now you have seen some of these politicians are out there doing multi condemnation. We will keep on condemning 48 hours after. We continue. Some of these people who are playing politics. Told us in 2019 when Ondo and the Southwest governors banned open grazing, some of the people who are condemning the killing came out to challenge them. One of the top presidential candidates, the PDP candidate, was even angry. There was saying that if he gets power, he's going to challenge the states that banned open grazing. Why would a same person in the 21st century Nigeria, Nigeria is the only country in the whole wide world? Where we still condone this 19th, 18th century open grazing. Go across the whole world, from Brazil, where we have the highest heads of cattle, to even in Africa, from Sudan to Egypt to other places. What you see is ranching or agro pastoral arrangement where farmers and the cattle yards band it together. If we want to see, see this, is the, this is the height of it. And if the indigenous people do not rise up now to stop this madness, it will continue. 
All right. All right. Um, Dr. Nameka, there's so much to unpack here. I mean, I, I would assume that you're in support of state police. And we will delve into this, but let's bring it back to politics because at the end of the day, these are some of the things that citizens must take into consideration when choosing who will become their next president. Now, let's bring it back to the APC. What are your thought, thoughts on the entire development in the APC leading to this all-important primary starting today? Like I said, APC has failed Nigeria on all fronts. You know, you know, I am I'm trying to control my emotions. I'm so angry here. It's understandable. It's that came to power seven years ago on three cardinal points, three plans. They told us they are going to fight corruption. Today, Nigeria is the most corrupt. In fact, corruption has gone pro max. They told us that they will slay insecurity. They will, they will wipe out the terrorists in six months. Seven years after, the terrorism has expanded from the northwest, northeast, to every other part of Nigeria. In fact, on the road, you are not safe. On the air, you are not safe. In the sea, you are not safe. Even in your homes, people are now being kidnapped for the child cards. They told us that they're going to build up the economy. The economy is the worst in the history of this nation. Now, they are in Abuja now planning to do a jamboree. Who in the field they get away from consuming the APC? For crying out loud. The truth is, look at the the top aspirants. Was it not one of them that asked us, where is the car? Even when the daughter of the Anapani foreign chief, the people that made him governor in 1910 against all odds. The daughter of the man was murdered. Just to sound politically correct, he asked, where is the cow? Who are we even among all the candidates or aspirants in APC? How many of them have has risen up, even in PDP, to tell us to condemn this and to take steps? We talked about state police. PDP, APC told us they are going to restructure. Even before the election, they did not restructure. Before 2019, when they knew that Nigerians were angry, that just were ready to vote them out, they, they set up a panel by L5, they brought out a recommendation and they adopted it. APC did not enforce it. And let me tell you, 2023, if we make the mistake of allowing the APC or PDP to come to power in 2023, Nigerians will suffer it. Let me tell you, Somali and Yemen will be chase play if Nigerians do not rise up now to take our nation back from these bandits, political bandits. That is what I call them and that is what they are. But the APC and the PDP do not have any good thing for the death. These guys are the same. These are political bandits. These are elitist gangsters. They are only united in corruption to steal and fraud. We have a third option now. We have a third force. And I pray God helps us. Let me tell you, not only about 1% of Nigerians have the capacity to die and leave this land. The rest, if we decide to play to our ethnic jingoism, if we decide to lean on religious, our religious independence and allow any of these political bandits that have been in play in Abuja over the last seven years to come back to power, I feel sorry for us. All right. Um, um, Dr. Barry, let's also talk about, you know, what Nigerians should expect. Sadly, you know, these are conversations that we sh sh still will have. Um, but of course, um, there is the primaries today. What um, are your expectations? How do you think it will turn out? My brother, I, 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 whatever options the APC brings out, I tell you, Nigerians will just, it's, like, it's just a case of what the fact, the options now available for Nigeria between the APC and the PDP. I said the last time I was here, here China, is the choice between the devil and the deep blue sea. But thank God that we have a third option. The Labour Party option is a third option. I pray also. That the candidate of Labour Party P2B should be very smart enough to pick a very awesome person from the north to partner with him. And let me tell us the truth: it's not just getting the presidency. Even in the states, every one of us must rise up to chase the way both the PDP and the APC candidates in our states. The governors have failed. The members of the National Assembly have also failed. We have been on this issue of see to amend the electoral act. It did not take them anything. In this country, the, the National Assembly, if they want to change the Constitution, even the 24 states, to allow state police to put in place fiscal federalism that will allow the autonomy of the regions and the states to be able to mount their own security architecture, they can do it. But these guys are only after looting. 
in beyond the presidency, we must look out for bold, courageous, fearless, knowledgeable men to elect them. But in the state assembly, the national assembly as governors, let me tell you, you cannot continue to do the same thing that you have been doing since that time and failing and expect to take a go to a and pass. You cannot. I mean, it's, it's what they say. All levels for the state to the national assembly to the presidency. Nigeria must rise. We, we, we will not have anybody to blame if we go ahead to elect the same set of people as governors, as national assembly members, as federal assembly members. This is now the time for discussion to start. Then every candidate for every position must tell us what are their positions for standing in this in Nigeria. Back to the 1960 consular framework. What is their position for allowing the regions to have their own security forces like we had it in 1960 to 1966? What is their position in turning this country from a consumption economy into a productive one? What is their idea and position in turning this economy of this country from a killing zone, from a mess and death of harvest of death and killing to a place where people are safe and protected. Oh. This is time for the conversion to start. It's not a time to say it's my turn, it's our turn, it's my trans man, it's my tongue man. These killers have shown us clearly that they have no respect for God, they have no respect for Doctor. man, they don't fear whether you're a Christian or a Muslim, and even a robot, it just and it. As long as you are a human being, you are subject and target of this genius. All right, Doctor, I just want you to, you know, let's wrap up with this question, you know, and that is, you know, do you have any faith that Nigerians are angry enough at this point to actually make, um, you, know, um, you know, a statement in 2023? The elections are, you know, sometime next year. Do you think that there is enough? you know, anger and desperation amongst Nigerians to get registered and vote? My prayer is that the, the elites, people like you and me who are knowledgeable, who are smart, who are really angry, who prays and ask God to save this country, should be able to go out there to convince a majority of us who don't even know what is happening. I tell you, one of the things this elitist gangsters has been doing in Nigeria is to make sure that they deprive people of education. 60% of, 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 the, of the inhabitants of this country, even those who claim to have gone to university, are illiterate. They have no capacity to analyze and digest issues. So it's our job for the very few who are honest, who are sincere, who are passionate about redeeming this land, all our society. We have no other home in this place to rise up and fight and educate these guys and charge them and mobilize them to understand what is happening and take this country back. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Naimeka O'Hari. I mean, you put it in the best way. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a change. And we look forward to seeing a change in Nigeria. Mm -hmm.